Hello, everyone. And our next talk will be uh, on Enamapt, uh, which is uh, an open data management uh, tool. It is a Horizon 2020 research project aimed at improving energy data management and accessibility for the low carbon transition of heating and cooling sectors. Uh, not only that, it's also a tool for visualization interface as well as a inner maps gateway, which is a search engine that acts as a single entry point to open access scientific publication on energy. To give us this talk, we are pleased to have Giulia Conforto, Conforto uh, our researcher for eThink Center for Energy. So without further ado, I will give the floor over to her. Hello, Giulia. Hi, and good morning, everyone. And Thank you for having me. How are you doing today? Oh, quite good, quite good. Uh, <laughs> and I do hope you enjoy giving this talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for inviting me to this virtual talk. Yes, today I'm going to introduce you to Enermaps. Uh, first, a couple of words on myself. I'm Giulia Conforto. I'm a researcher at eThink, which is a spin-off of the Technical University of Vienna. And my background is in energy economics, uh, um, international relations and diplomacy, and I'm a project manager. Uh, before becoming a researcher, I used to negotiate partnerships for sustainable energy uh, at the United Nations Initiative, Sustainable Energy for All, and previously I was in a few utilities. Now, let's go into Enermaps. Uh, Enermaps, uh, as you mentioned, is a Horizon 2020 funded project. It is a research project um, and uh, it, it tries and tackles the issue of energy data. Now, energy data is a bit different from uh, other kinds of data because uh, it is often uh, hard to find. It is very fragmented across different repositories uh, and finding, searching and finding accurate data for energy professional is uh, a very time-consuming process. So Enermaps aims at su sustaining the energy transition through a user-friendly digital platform that we have developed on two layers. One is the Enermaps Open Data Management Tool, which is a visualization interface for geolocalized data, enriched with 50 curated data sets, data sets that have gone through a quality check, and five calculation modules. Now, this visualization interface is an evolution of another research project uh, focused as well on heating and cooling that was a hot maps, of which I will tell you a couple of words uh, in a little bit. And the second layer is the Enermaps Gateway, which is a findable entry point for the energy community um, that allows to search uh, and reuse open access data and publication. Uh, this is the consortium that is developing the project. Uh, CREM, EURAC, EDIAP, TEUVIN, OpenAir, ETHINK, and REVOLVE. And these are the main objectives of Enermaps. So the first is to centralize energy data sets on one gateway to connect both the energy researchers on one hand and the energy professionals on the other, because usually um, several user groups are in the field of energy have uh, very compartmented uh, areas where they work, where they find their data, when they find their uh, information. And we are trying uh, to put them in contact. Uh, the second objective is to improve the accessibility of scientific data sets uh, in order to maximize uh, and, uh, uh, the incentives for the researchers to share their data uh, with decision makers and not only with other researchers. Then, of course, to ensure the quality of the data sets that we have centralized on the gateway and to increase the energy data knowledge of users through training activities and um, dissemination, such as the talk of today. Uh, the whole project is infused with the principle of fair data, which is findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. The main project deliverables are, first of all, the identification of uh, the energy data needs uh, among users, um, the data set selections, so which data sets are relevant uh, for the project, their collection and validation, then the development of the gateway, uh, the development of the visualization tool, the visualization interface, um, of course, the development of the calculation modules that for now are only five, but potentially they could be many more. Um, and then, of course, uh, dissemination and capacity building. Uh, 
the energy data needs and demands have been assessed through two parallel processes. One was a literature review, uh, which uh, um, gave as a result uh, um, a, a substantial need for data on renewable energy, energy efficiency, environmental and climate data, and socioeconomic data. And then a series of ex expert interviews, uh, which on top of that, um, gave the indication of a need for a data on energy consumption and production, meteorological data, and then energy um, production and consumption in a decentralized uh, way. Now, here there is a chart that summarizes uh, the 50 data sets that have been selected and curated. As you can see, uh, the main part is um, constituted of renewable energy sources generation data, then building stock, um, and user energy consumption, emission, climate, and satellite data. Um, research and in, in innovation and investments uh, is a small part, and socioeconomic data is also a small part. Interesting enough, 15 of those data sets come from publicly funded projects because the FAIR data principle has now uh, entered all the European projects. So the more um, the European projects grow, the more uh, findable, reusable, and interop interoperable data we, we have. And so the more we sustain open science. Uh, the quality check that is being carried out uh, on these data sets has covered their accuracy, consistency, completeness, and transparency. Uh, we have divided the data sets in three levels. Um, 20 data sets belong to the first level where uh, we have collected a, seri a series of uh, experts' feedback, uh, user feedback on Kialo, and uh, the metadata were existed in uh, concerning these data sets. The second level also comprises 20 data sets. Here there was a more accurate uh, control, um, a methodology check, uh, a completeness control, uh, a check of the statistical accuracy and of their uh, consistency. And then the level three are 10 uh, featured data sets that have endured one uh, additional level of uh, uh, control, which was a comparison with similar data sets to have even more information. Now, we say that the two main deliverables of, of the platform are these two layers, the gateway and the visualization tool. You have to imagine the gateway as a, um, a research, uh, a search engine. So with a high coverage, with thousands of publication and a very low selectivity where a user with some keywords can find um, research outcomes, publications, data sets, software, projects, and so on and so forth. While the data management tool, you have to imagine it uh, as a visualization tool, as a map with a number of calculation modules that only shows the curated data sets and the data that has been validated and used in the calculations. So a high selectivity approach with a low coverage. And this double layer approach has been developed expressly to meet different needs of different uh, uh, user groups. Now, this is a screenshot of the gateway. I'm not sure if we will have time for a demo. We gave a demo on Monday during a tech tutorial. Uh, <coughs> currently, it's being fine-tuned to show only the results related to energy, because this is the issue. Uh, the structure has been provided by Opener, another research uh, project. Uh, uh, this was not a, uh, a Horizon 2020, it was a um, seventh uh, framework program project, so a bit older. Um, and Opener covers uh, the whole world of open science. Now, the issue is to identify the right keywords to cover in this NRMAPS gateway, all the resources that are energy relevant without leaving out resources that are relevant to energy, but without including resources that had tricky keywords that could uh, uh, fall into a in, uh, research uh, connected to energy uh, topics. So for instance, if you think of energy cells, if you think of the simple word energy, uh, you could find results in nutrition, in biology, in physics, in chemistry, uh, in engineering, uh, and not everything is really connected to energy uh, per se. <coughs> so the fact is that um, the, on the one hand, the gateway sustains uh, the practice of open science, and on the other hand, it tries to address a few challenges, <coughs> I'm sorry, a few challenges 
um, that are, for instance, discovering uh, the correct, the appropriate uh, and relevant literature in the data deluge, in the amount of uh, resources that are present in open science, um, without the dispersion of research products. Because the issue is that if you think of yourself when you're looking for a publication, when you're looking for a data set, and you go on uh, Scopus or on Google Scholar or on OpenAir, um, and you don't use the right keywords, you start receiving thousands of results. And how do you find the right data or the right publication in that amount? It's going to be time consuming, it's going to be dispersive, and it's going to be um, susceptible of errors, of course. So these are the ways, uh, the, the filters that can be used on the gateway. Keywords, projects, data sources, and of course, the Zenodo communities. Uh, on top of that, there are um, a, another couple of features. One is uh, the linking for which uh, products in OpenAir and Crossref, data site, Orsid, and all the um, content providers that I will show you in a second uh, can be linked to uh, the community also in bulk. And then there is a, an effect of propagation because if there are um, community results connected to research project, uh, products that are present in the results of the gateway, both are shown together. And the full text mining, this is what uh, we are uh, what is still a work in progress uh, is a classification based on the cl Frascati taxonomy uh, through which we are fine tuning uh, the results of the gateway. Now, if you're not familiar with open air, this is the research graph of open air. And uh, to the left, you see uh, the type of sources that are uh, that are covered by open air and to the right you see uh, a number of content providers uh, these are just the main ones so crossref as we said zenoto the directory of open uh, access journals and now uh, taking the open air uh, explore so the portal of open air uh, aggregating all the data sources uh, from zenodo and argos and all the other content providers open air operates uh, um, an integration with additional sources concerning metadata, uh, relationships, and so on. Uh, then uh, operates a cleaning, deduplicating those research outcomes uh, that are, for instance, a preprint and a postprint of the same article and showing them together, and then enriching them via a, a full text mining algorithm and eventually operating an additional cleaning after which they add uh, an index and they add some statistics. Just as a reference, OpenAir, if you haven't used it so far, it is a, a very rich source. They use 91,000 data sources and currently uh, covers 122 million publications. And they are all open in some way. Some of them are open access, some of them have uh, open access metadata. So even if you cannot read the full text, at least you know that publication has been published because you can read the abstract and then you are redirected on the proprietary website where you can uh, access the, the resource, sometimes through a paywall. Unfortunately, we know how it works. So the way the, the NMAPS gateway can support uh, the practice of open science is by allowing to publish in open access, uh, by publishing all type of resource products, products by uh, using open repositories, by allowing you to link your research projects, uh, by sustaining the fair data principle, uh, by reusing existing data and software. And uh, on top of that, it has some additional features, uh, which are, for instance, the data management plans, the, full, uh, the, the community best practices. Now, uh, let's have a look at the second layer, the visualization tool. Now, the visualization tool is an evolution of hot maps, as uh, I mentioned. And uh, <clears throat> uh, this is, again, a screenshot. Let's see if we will have a minute for a demo. Otherwise, there should be the recording of the tech tutorial that we gave on Monday, which covered both the gateway and the visualization tool. Um, it gathers uh, all curated data sets in one single repository. And it allows to visualize the data, which is geolocalized, and to download the data sets. And on top of that, it offers a number of calculation modules. 
Let's take a step uh, back. Hotmaps. Hotmaps is a toolbox to support public authorities, energy agency, and planners in strategic heating and cooling planning at local, regional, and national level. Uh, it is uh, um, open access, it is uh, user-based, and it is compatible with DU28. It allows in few minutes to uh, estimate the energy demand in a certain area and to estimate uh, the potential for district heating to make projections uh, uh, according to a number of scenarios, to play with those scenarios. It has been used in a number of comprehensive assessments, which are um, the documents uh, that uh, the European member states, sorry, European member states have to develop concerning their heating and cooling uh, strategy and their energy uh, strategy. Now, Hotmaps uh, achieved the uh, TRL, the Technology Readiness Level 7 during the project, and is currently uh, undergoing um, the application for another project to achieve TRL 8. Uh, during Hotmaps, there was a database that was developed because data is, again, one of the main issues. Uh, when assessing the energy um, demand, especially in heating and cooling in a defined area, most of the times, uh, local administrations lack some data. And so it, 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 they start, they, they have to face this hurdle of finding the missing data, harmonizing it, cleaning it, uh, reworking it in a way that can be used for uh, the assessment. Uh, Hotmaps provided a European-wide data set so that if more precise data is available at local level, it can be uploaded. But if there is some data missing, the, the user can always use the default data set. Then it developed the toolbox, which, as you saw, looks similar to, um, uh, to Enermaps, which is this map with a number of calculation modules, and then um, a wiki, so uh, an open access uh, web page with a number of documentation, training material, the handbooks, uh, and uh, everything that a user could need for <clears throat> starting their strategic energy planning. This is the uh, workflow of uh, the calculations uh, that can be done on Hender maps, uh, on sorry, on hot maps. Um, maybe we'll skip this and keep it if there are any questions. This is how uh, hot maps looks like. I've added a few extra slides, so uh, I, I guess that we will publish this publication in uh, this presentation in the proceedings of the conference. So there are the references, but we don't really have to go into detail into this part. For instance, here there are the links of the toolbox and the project the hot maps, the wiki, and the, and the handbooks. And now back to Enermaps. So Enermaps takes all that has been developed in Hotmaps and brings it to a higher level because uh, the code used in Enermaps is completely open access and it is much simpler. Uh, the calculation modules can be downloaded, can be reused. The code of the calculation modules can be reused for creating uh, your own code for your own calculation module. And here is a, um, a summary of the calculation modules that are being developed in Enermaps. Um, so we have created a YouTube playlist. Um, the, in the presentation, there is the link. Uh, you can also find it looking for Enermaps eThink, and, and there will be the, the playlist. Uh, one video is on the gateway and on the heat demand. The heat demand is a calculation module that already existed in Hotmaps, which here has been enriched with a machine learning algorithm. And it allows to estimate the heat demand potential for district heating. Then HeatLearn, which is a predictive model uh, for aggregated energy demand. And then there are four calculation modules that are almost ready to be deployed. They, they should be deployed the next week or the following. One is the refurbish scenario, which allows to assess the refurbishment impact on building energy demand. One develops a heating and cooling scenarios. One estimates district heating, uh, the, the district heating expected potential in a certain area. And one allows to calculate the space heating, uh, a number of space heating demand profiles. Uh, 
I have added a few slides uh, on the calculation module, which I suggest to skip here, but they will be for reference, one per calculation module in the presentation, and a few links to the NMAPS project website, the gateway. There are two versions. One is the, uh, of course, the official one is the beta, the visualization tool, which is currently in beta. Then the GitHub repository, which is particularly interesting because there the user will find all the data sets and all the code used for developing the NMAPS. And then, of course, the wiki. Now, uh, after today, the next upcoming uh, events that we're going to be part of with the project will be the 2nd of December at Enlit. Enlit Europe is a, a, an exhibition dedicated to energy utilities uh, and it takes place in Milan. Uh, then we will be at the e-sustainability conference in Granada and at the World Sustainable Energy Days in Wales. These are the open um, uh, events. There will be some private events. So we, we are presenting it. Uh, we are presenting NMAPS uh, uh, in research centers, in universities. There is a quite thorough uh, capacity building um, and training program. Um, I don't know if we can interact with the audience, if there are any questions. Uh, yeah, I will be the audience uh, guide, per se. <laughs> um, yeah, I do have a question regarding the, let's say, not, not just user experience, but how to best use it. So you said the whole map is still in development, but it can still be used. But in your, what is in your mind the perfect user that goes into any maps, hot maps, what do they use it for? What is your perfect uh, person so to use it? We do have uh, three main target groups among the users. Uh, one is uh, research and academia, absolutely. Because the issue, you know, when you are a researcher and you are um, developing your own research, your own paper, your own analysis, the main issue is uh, to base your assumptions and your estimations on uh, and your calculation, your, your, your module, your simulation, whatever is uh, the, the topic of your research on reliable data. And this is a big issue because reliable data is, you, is very often uh, protected by a paywall. Instead, here we have open access, reliable, curated, and validated data. So that could be um, a user that would go uh, to the gateway for the publications, uh, for publishing his own research results, and to the visualization uh, tool for seeing uh, the, the data sets available, downloading them. Potentially, uh, an IT developer, a researcher in IT could go to the GitHub and reuse the code. Actually, part of the tech tutorial that we had on Monday at the Data Science Conference uh, showed how to find the open access code on GitHub and reuse it to create your own calculation module. We, we, we did it live on Monday, so it, it, that is uh, one of the options. We are trying to um, address also uh, the industry and the public administrations. So in the industry, the fact is that um, if I'm thinking of a utility or an energy consultant, an energy planner, uh, time constraint is one of the ma main issues and uh, the usability of the tool. Uh, so that user would probably, most probably not use the gateway, but they could use the visualization tool to estimate uh, the en energy demand uh, profile for heating in their own area <coughs> and compare that to um, the projections and estimations that usually are done, especially within utilities. Uh, when it comes to public administrations, we are in the process of considering uh, if they could be um, also uh, suitable users. They are definitely a, a group of stakeholders for the project. The point is that the level of um, uh, technical skills of the staff in public administrations depends a lot on the size of the administrations. So you can imagine that big cities have energy planners and the small municipalities don't. Uh, so an energy planner in a big city could, could very well use the visualization tool. Most probably they wouldn't use the gateway. In a small city, hard to say, we have planned 
to have discussions with a number of representatives of the public administrations and see, for instance, what they would need to find it useful. Because being a research project, this is the cool part that we keep developing it. And yes, this is where we stand. Did, did, they, did they answer your question? Yeah, perfectly. Um, and to go on a different direction now from the user to those that actually provide data, what were some of the challenges, especially in the beginning of the project you faced with getting this data uh, from the people and especially the reliable data, as you said? That well, f first of all, the, uh, the, the work package on the data selection had to identify which kind of data would have been the most useful. Then they, have to, they had to identify where to find it. They had to be open access sources. And I have to tell you one thing. So uh, the visualization tool gathers 50 data sets because this was what was agreed in the grant, grant agreement. The gateway right now, right now features uh, some 30 something data sets because we are still in the process of defining with the pro with the single proprietary website of the data set if their license allows for that data set to be republished on a different website unfortunately this is the fight for open science the data is out there you can see it you can use it you can download it but if you are someone else and you want to republish it on your website or just put a link to their website, you have to be 100% that you're not violating their license. So this is quite an, a hurdle, yes. Uh, and we are grateful that the research project is there now so you can provide the data to the researchers. Finally, uh, yes, we're also very happy. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, that is that is that's it from me uh, for the for the questions. Thank you very much for the for the talk, for the insights into data, and I'm sure some of this and the suggestions you gave throughout it. Uh, so that's it. Thank you on behalf of the conference, and I do hope you enjoyed the, uh, giving the talk as well. Very much. Thank you once again for having me here. It was an honor to participate. I wish you all the best for the rest of the conference. Thank you. Bye, everyone.